Good afternoon, Cedarfield. Hope you are doing well uh, this afternoon on this fine December 22nd. Um, those of you that are listening tonight, families across the world and um, uh, team members and or residents, Pinnacle Advantage members, thank you for tuning into this uh, live chat. Uh, we appreciate you taking time out of the, your holiday week. Uh, at the top of the hour, I wanted to just start off with a little COVID-19 preparedness plan update. We um, have been on the phone for the last couple of days with uh, Virginia Department of Health, um, our friends here locally in Henrico County, the epidemiologists, um, and just kind of doing a lot of fact finding ourselves as a COVID-19 preparedness team. And um, everyone, uh, hopefully is adverse that there's this new variant uh, in town across the world called the Omicron variant. And um, it is by all indications, um, especially from our epidemiologist this morning, um, it is surging, as they say. I think over the weekend I, I saw a report that said it's the COVID blizzard of, the, of this winter. And um, the good news, let's start off with some good news. The good news is that Cedar Field right now, our dashboard is green with COVID and we want to keep it that way going through March, the winter time. Um, and the further good news is that Cedar Field residents are 97% of the residents of Cedar Field um, have received the booster shot with a Pfizer. So that's even better good news. Um, since the Pfizer and the Moderna are now leaning as recommended by uh, the CDC. And so, um, however, there is this surge going on right now and the, uh, the, the Virginia Department of Health and the CDC are strongly recommending that we not only um, in the last couple of months, I was talking about the trifecta, meaning the wet mask wearing, good sanitation, and or good distance um, control um, as we're gathering in large groups uh, in the indoor setting. But um, now we're adding that, that fourth leg, which is the booster shot. And so it'll be really imperative as the holiday season uh, is upon us as we move into New Year's Day that we really all religiously practice these, at least these three, because 97% of the community um, has their booster shot. And so good mask wearing, sanitation, and good distance control will really rule the day in um, keeping this variant out of Cedarfield. It is to be taken seriously. Um, there, the epidemiologists um, in Henrico County have been talking with the CDC and um, right now in the United States there's about 807,000 people who over the last almost two years have passed away because of this uh, pandemic and in the United States alone, can we shut that phone off please? We have no sound. That's, that's why you didn't. Where that red button is, is it supposed to be the voice? Yeah. It's saying IT connection plan off. Are we videotaping? It's recording. It's, is it recording audio? That's what I'm having problems. We can't hear outside the door. Well, maybe we can't hear outside the door, but can we, are we recording audio? Oh, good. Okay, so I'm going to continue and then people can view the video. So as I was, uh, I'm sorry, as I was speaking about the pandemic uh, results, right now there's 808,000 people in the United States alone who have passed away from COVID-19. And because of the new variant in town, um, and the fact that we have, um, um, and I'm not about to create a division here, this is just facts, the fact that there are people, a large portion of people in the Commonwealth that are unvaccinated 
and there's a large portion of people who have not received their booster, the spread of this Omicron is highly likely going through the next couple of months. And so the more that we, we or you individually can practice this four-legged stool, um, especially going into the holidays as we are gathering with friends and family, uh, the better off um, you will be, the better off Cedarfield will be, and uh, the surrounding area. So um, with that said, just a couple of, of words of caution, and I'm going to put this in print um, and distribute this tomorrow to all the residents since we're having a little bit of technical difficulties as well. But I get it's also good to just have it on, on your coffee table. So if, um, if you happen to be exposed to somebody that has been tested for COVID-19, it is highly, and they're positive. Um, at this point, many of the tests don't differentiate between Delta and Omicron. Omicron is very um, contagious. And so um, what we are recommending that if, um, if, a, if a resident uh, and or a team member um, through this holiday season um, is exposed to somebody and you know that you're exposed, a, if you're a team member, I need you to, to talk with your supervisor about it, and then that supervisor will talk to Connie McGowan uh, and or Ann Hopper. If you are a resident of Cedarfield and you live in independent living and you have an exposure, I am respectfully asking that you bring it forth. Don't just hibernate um, for a couple of days. Bring it forth so that we can work through our protocol to make sure that we uh, have good contact tracing from where you might have been around Cedarfield. Um, that has been a, a great recipe for success at Cedarfield. That we, the the fact that we have been able to trace where somebody has been and then notify others um, accordingly to keep them safe. And so. Uh, if you are a resident in independent living, I'm respectfully asking that you contact Ann Hopper uh, through these holiday next two weeks, and then we'll go through a certain protocol. Um, if you are a resident or a family member of a resident um, in uh, the memory support assisted living, assisted living and or health care, and we have an exposure of, of a resident in those levels of care, uh, please bubble them up to your clinical leader and or your uh, the DON Tamika, Tamika Ross, and so that we can follow the protocols and keeping the residents safe and the surrounding uh, residents safe. One other uh, particular note, so mask wearing has kind of been, I think in to just listening to the experts and just, you know, being at supermarkets in the mall, what have you, I think mask wear this is my personal opinion i think we all take for granted mask wearing now um how we touch it how we don't off and don't and it's just we, we take mask wearing for granted i think and so um if i am respectfully asking if a resident or a cedarfield team member um, experiences a COVID 19 exposure that instead of wearing a cloth mask um, or anything else that's not approved that we have in our in our mind in this next two or three weeks that we need to wear either a Ken a KN95 or a nine uh, an N95 mask that will really protect you from everybody else because uh, mask wearing is one of those three-legged stools uh, stools to the three uh, arms of keeping COVID out of Cedarfield. And so um, if you don't have any, uh, those masks, I would just gear, there's plenty of them in the marketplace now. There is not a shortage of them. They're, they're at CVS, um, Sam's Club. We have them right down here in the gift store, the gift shop. Um, team members, if you need one, we have um, uh, available uh, inventory uh, in your neighborhood and or your department. And so that's um, that protocol is, is really important as we go through these next uh, the next couple of weeks, especially through the holiday season. Um, I was talking with, I went home this past weekend 
and uh, not in my immediate family, but as we were talking about this conversation, is that na naturally things happen. Else in, this, in the second layer of our family, um, a couple of cousins and uh, aunts and uncles, they, they gathered uh, a month, month ago, right around Thanksgiving time. Uh, we were not there, but of that group, there was half of them, there was 17 of them that were gathering right after Thanksgiving and half of them uh, came down with um, um, COVID-19 and all of them are fine to this day. Um, but they weren't wearing their mask and they were within six feet of each other. So um, just a personal experience. And um, I think the more, again, may seem like a, a broken record, but the more that we can concentrate on these things, uh, the better off that we are attempting to protect yourself and protect the people uh, in and around you. If anybody has any questions about our um, uh, COVID-19 preparedness plans, we're actually going to publish um, a memo in our Cedarfield Forward plan um, tomorrow so that residents can see the latest of what we're talking about. Um, and uh, be able to educate your own families about what the protocol is of Cedar Field. And so, and then probably about two weeks from now, once the, the, our current uh, Virginia Department of Health has a little bit more education and facts behind them about uh, the Omicron variant uh, stemming from the, the hospitals and the surrounding clinics, um, we'll republish our Cedarfield Forward Plan uh, again in about two weeks with any, um, if it has any uh, changes as a result of the data that's available to the Virginia Department of Health. So, um, some good news. I'm going to shift away from our COVID-19 dashboard and talk a little bit about dining services. Um, over the last couple of two weeks, David and the team have opened up uh, the Prima restaurant uh, with um, table side service. And that seems to be uh, a thumbs up from people, from the residents. We are um, at a place where we probably in two weeks are going to open up the Atrium Cafe to seven days a week. We've, we have experienced um, some significant applicant flow in these last three to four weeks. And the team has been vetting uh, those applicants. We have two, uh, three people, I'm sorry, that are, are currently going through uh, the recruitment process of, of checks and background checks, et cetera. And we're hoping that in the next two weeks that these three people come to orientation because that that's a milestone in this uh, workforce pandemic that's a milestone getting them to orientation and so um, if all that happens in the next couple of weeks probably the early part of january we're going to open up the clinic uh, to seven days a week so lunch and dinner seven days a week so that'll be a refreshing change can i right can i get an amen on that one amen okay good so that's some good news on the dining services front. Um, I'm going to turn over the microphone to Ann Hopper. Uh, for those of you that don't know Ann, Ann Hopper is the wellness clinic RN. And she's, as we are approaching these, these winter months and um, uh, a potential surge in the Omicron, uh, Ann just wants to, again, emphasize some of the benefits of having a clinic right here in your own home. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ann Hopper, the nurse in the clinic. And as Michael was saying, I just wanted to go over um, what we can do in the clinic during these winter months. Um, we do flu testing in the clinic. Um, your doctors are probably going to start going back to um, some telemed visits. And so we can help with that if you have an outside doctor. Um, with setting it up either through an iPad or a phone, doing FaceTime. Um, we will also, uh, Dr. Shear does make house calls. She's not 
in the building five days a week the way the clinic is open but if she's available she can come in for a sick visit either to the clinic or to your apartment if you can't get out and that's including even if you have a community doctor uh, so you go through the clinic uh, with any concerns or you know if you're not feeling well we have social services we have our two social workers uh, Christina Craig and Kathy Moran are in the clinic as well and we see this time of year families will come in and they might notice a change um, in their loved one and so they might want to talk about uh, just a plan of care what what's available in independent living to keep someone independent uh, what are the the steps we need to do um, you know Michael published our navigation series back in August and it was pretty long pretty involved and pretty confusing so what we are able to do is meet you individually and just go over what's available uh, to you as a resident specifically to your needs and then uh, the other part of it is you know I talked to people last night outside of dining as to what the clinic can do and some residents are like I hear about affirmation I hear about health pro heritage what do I do and I said well when something comes up call the clinic and we'll try and navigate you through the system as to what works for you what what's the therapy that you need um, so either with your doctor um, outside or an inside doctor we can help with that uh, let's see what else we have we also have dispatch health they're a great service at night and on the weekends and even over Christmas and New Year's when it seems like there's no one available to you uh, dispatch health is available from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and it's 365 days a year um, our supervisors when I'm not here the supervisor knows the phone number we've given out a ton of magnets if you need a magnet with the phone number or just a flyer that goes over information we can get that to you and that's really helpful and once again I talk about that vial of life that's what I use when I call dispatch health the vials of life what we just put on the screen recently was if you had a booster just reach out to us to make sure we have it documented on your vial of life um, which is really important if you go to a doctor or a hospital everyone wants to know how far along you are with these uh, COVID vaccines so um, updating your vials of life are really important for you and for us to have them and just make sure they're in your refrigerator in the large um, uh, medicine container usually the top shelf and if they're really important if you go out for an emergency and we're not trying to track down your medications or who's your emergency contact if they need to be contacted it's really nice to have that um, information to go out with you it's only as good as as it is updated as current as it is so if it's five years old it's going to have your medication from five years ago so that being updated is really important and anything else we're happy to help you with in the clinic call us at 8846 or 8847 and um, we can work through just about everything thanks thank you Ann so the clinic is is a, a an enormous uh, nucleus to the safety net we've been talking about here for a couple of months uh, a couple other service amenities that can help any resident and or people who are listening uh, the, through these next couple of months and we emphasize these uh, service lines because we see historically from year to year especially over the last 10 years that we see an uptick uh, in December January and February of incidents of um, of uh, various kinds with residents and so the more that residents are partaking in the services of the clinic uh, with the physician services the more residents are taking advantage of home health and home care and outpatient therapy the better off the resident is um, as an example of home health uh, last this time last week we had two people on caseload this week we have 22 
uh, people on caseload. Uh, in outpatient therapy, we have 133 people uh, on uh, what I call caseload throughout uh, this the last month. And so all that is good news because residents are being proactive in seeking out the clinic, home health, home care, or outpatient therapy to set up their own little safety net as we go through some some trying, historically, some trying couple of months. So plan ahead, protect yourself, um, uh, and if you uh, have any questions about the clinic, see Ann. If you have any questions about home health, uh, Jennifer will be more than happy to answer questions for you. Um, outpatient therapy, many people know Penny because she's been here for three years, and all of that is part of uh, the safety net. Um, we are going through uh, to help residents understand more of these services. We, uh, Ann and I and several of us have connected over the last uh, couple of weeks to put together a December, January, and February education plan. And so you're gonna see Ann, Jennifer, Penny, myself, uh, physicians in, at various points throughout um, the month to help educate residents about these service lines. And so uh, not just here during a live chat or in the fellowship hall, but um, in February, we even have intentions to get to all, uh, contacting all the area reps and trying to maybe even schedule something on that level, trying to get into the neighborhoods of one of the 20 neighborhoods with a scheduled meeting within your neighborhood and helping educate residents even on that micro level to understand the safety net. So we wanna get real specific, we wanna get real personal uh, and at, answer as many questions as we can of the residents. So look forward to these next three months um, of this communication and education. Should be very beneficial for the resident. Shifting to our master plan expansion, uh, some good news. Next week, uh, we another milestone is being met um, on the fourth floor, what was the fourth floor um, of our, our nursing home. Um, a section of that is being turned over from the general contractor to operations, uh, mainly where the offices were located, all the health care offices. So the administrator, DON, social workers, um, all those offices are gonna be turned back over to us on uh, Tuesday of next week. So that's some good news. And the health services team has, they commissioned, Matt Dameron talked about this a couple uh, weeks ago, just to reemphasize it. The health services team commissioned, um, thanks to Mike Greenwood and Eldon Rucker mentioning this, they commissioned uh, a action team called Rebranding. They've been meeting for a couple of weeks um, to work with the health services committee and um, talk about what services, how we monitor things, what are the metrics around health services, uh, assisted living, memory support, and uh, long-term care so that we can go through a rebranding here in the beginning of the year to help give every resident and family a confidence level about the about those levels of care and so they e they even have a post stay survey um, that the team has been working on with the residents to understand even the the, the residents stay and the uh, their satisfaction level around that stay but more importantly what we're going to do about uh, things that they maybe have missed the mark on and so uh, look forward, Matt is going to be here next week to talk a little bit more about that rebranding action team and that post-stay um, survey. Last thing for me, uh, just a little bit uh, about human resources. Again, we're in this workforce pandemic, and so we've been throwing a lot at this pandemic uh, to try to find qualified people uh, that not only are experienced in their vocation, but also fit the culture of Cedarfield. Uh, last time I was at this live chat, I had mentioned we went from 34 open positions down to 27. Um, and then this week we even trended downward uh, even from there, now we're at 24. So a lot of the things that we are employing right now, I believe are working. They're all like little things that have to work in concert together in order to combat this workforce pandemic. One of the tools I just wanted to share with folks is a, it's a 
It's a software company called We Care Connect. And so every new team member that comes to Cedarfield is interviewed four times, once at their 14th day mark, another at their 45th day mark, um, at their 90th day mark, and at, at their 180th day mark. So somebody from this company outside of Cedarfield or Pinnacle Living calls the new team member four times within their first six months and asks them seven questions. And that data, uh, most of the time, if any of you are in human resources or owned your own businesses, um, most of the time people leave organizations because they really can't talk with their supervisor about their orientation um, or the tools that they've been uh, given in their uh, first couple of weeks. And so that's the intent of this survey. It's called We Care Connect. And all of that data, after the consultant hangs up with the team member, all that data comes right to uh, the executive directors around our Pinnacle Living family of communities. And then we work with the director and or the supervisor and that team member. We host a, a little mini meeting of sorts to resolve what the issues are. So um, I just wanted to share a couple of facts to arm residents with uh, data. Um, around how well this particular software is working. And there's this one particular category called your supervisor. When you look at this We Care Connect dashboard, there are seven categories in this dashboard. Excuse me. And over the last, over the last 90 days, this dashboard is green, meaning that the, all these categories that are measuring how well the supervisor is orienting this, the, the new team members, um, all these categories are green. So they're 94% a plus um, as they are going about their job orienting new team members to the position. We've had a couple of outliers, um, but for the most part, 94% is, a, is a, a good grade in my book. And um, as one example of things that we're doing, differently today than we did maybe a year ago to make sure that we are spending residents dollars efficiently and uh, trying to uh, lower our turnover rate to an acceptable level and in my view anywhere between 75 and 80 percent is probably a good number right now we sit at about 70 percent so i want to lower it about 10 more percent um, 20% turnover is probably a good thing for a variety of reasons why people leave organizations, uh, both personal reasons, retirements, moving on to different uh, promotions, et cetera. So, uh, so We Care Connect, uh, we have that tool at our disposal. Uh, that's working very well. Um, and these uh, CNA classes that I keep talking about down at the clubhouse, where we have three CNA schools uh, here teaching new uh, people how to become uh, a, a certified nursing assistant as a profession, uh, a very noble thing to do. Uh, that's paying dividends. Uh, as, uh, as I stand here, we've hired five people over the last couple of weeks that have come out of that class that we have hosted here over the last 60 days. And so, uh, we were polling those five people and asked them, did you hear of Cedarfield before you started this class? Um, and the answer uh, was a universal no. We did not know that Cedarfield even existed as an option of employment. And so those, uh, those dividends are, 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 paying, are, are bearing fruit for us. And not to mention, I think the couple weeks ago when we had mentioned that we were raising our minimum uh, wage per hour to $15 and that we, we, we flooded the marketplace on social media with that, um, with that policy change and we let the marketplace know that we were working on work, we call them work perks um, and enhancing a, a team member's experience around work perks. Uh, for example, if a, if a team member works Monday through Friday, uh, during the daytime, they, um, they have uh, a free lunch available to them. Um, and the enhancement to that is working to make sure that any team member has a, a meal available to them, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, 
or even the nurses on the 11 to 7 shift to get them uh, some sort of meal. Uh, we're working on that as well. And so all that to say is I think all those all those conversations and all that energy uh, is is starting to um, uh, help us with our recruitment efforts in and around the region. All right, I'm going to turn to any, do we have any questions? or We have no questions. Anyone have any questions here? We have about 30 residents in the fellowship hall. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm aware that we don't have any, we didn't have any sound for the first 30 minutes. We don't have any sound now. Cor it's yeah, it's on, it's on right now. Well, it wasn't on for the first 30 minutes. So we, we've recorded this live chat and uh, we'll make an announcement uh, tonight if anybody wants to view the live chat on Touchdown that they can do so with the, uh, with the audio feed attached to it. Any other questions from the group here? Since we have 30, it looks like we have 30 residents here. Nope. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to, where'd she go? Trish, you ready? Turn it over to Trish for some words of spiritual well-being. Good afternoon, Cedarfield. Boy, you just never know how much we appreciate when our technology works until we hit a bump in the road. And then we truly appreciate the times when it did work before that. I wanted to share with you some words from Dutch Catholic priest, professor, writer, and theologian, Henry Nowen. He wrote this regarding the Christmas season. God came to us because he wanted to join us on the road, to listen to our stories, to help us realize that we are not walking in circles, but moving toward the house of peace and joy. This is the great mystery of Christmas that continues to give us comfort and consolation. We are not alone on this journey. The challenge is to let God be with us. A part of us clings to our aloneness and does not allow God to touch us where we are most in pain. Often, we hide precisely the places in ourselves where we feel guilty, ashamed, confused, and lost. We do not give God a chance to be with us where we feel most alone. Christmas is the renewed invitation not to be afraid and to let God in, whose love is greater than our own hearts and minds can comprehend. God wants to be our companion. Thank you very much. Hope you have a wonderful afternoon.